Hello everyone and welcome back to English with Lucy. I have got such an exciting video for you today. We are going to be comparing New Zealand, Australian and British English slang. And I've got two fantastic collaborators on board with me today. Representing Australian English, we have got Pete. G'day you mob, I'm Pete, the host of Aussie English, a YouTube channel and podcast aimed at teaching people Australian English, culture and history. I am from the southeast of Australia. And we also have Rosie from Not Even French. Kia ora, English with Lucy fans. My name is Rosie from the YouTube channel Not Even French, where we jam on all things French culture and language and Kiwi culture or New Zealand culture and language as well. It's such a pleasure to have them both on the channel. I have left all of their details in the description box down below. This is a two-part video. This week we'll be looking at the slang, the vocabulary, and in the next video we will be comparing pronunciation. I know for a lot of you, New Zealand English and Australian English sounds extremely similar, but there are some differences, so we'll be listening out for that. Something else quite interesting that I have left in the description box down below is a link which leads to a free PDF that I have created that goes with this lesson. If you would like to download that free PDF, all you've got to do is click on that link and then you sign up to my mailing list and I will then send the PDF directly to your inbox. You will then get all future PDFs for free each week, plus all of my news, offers and course information. Okay, let's begin with the comparison. I am going to show some images to Pete and Rosie and they are going to tell us what they would call the images in their own dialect. Please let me know in the comments section if you say something completely different, let me know where you're from as well. It'd be really nice to share vocabulary. Let's get started with number one. I forgot to tell you where I'm all from. <laughs> I am Lucy, I'm from the UK, specifically Cambridgeshire. All right, so the first image here is clearly an esky. This is something in Australia that I think we call it an esky from the word Eskimo. Okay, so this item for me is a chili bin. Chili bin. Okay, this for me is a cool box, uh, but I much prefer their words. It's amazing how these countries can be so close together, relatively. They also sound, to somebody who isn't from that part of the world, quite similar to one another, so it's really cool to see that they have such different slang words for things. Okay, number two. What would you call this? All right, so this is clearly chewing gum, but the Australian slang term for chewing gum would be chewy. And I know you guys are going to think about the character from Star Wars. Yes, that joke gets made a little bit, but we also use the slang term chewy for chewing gum. Chewy. So this is, of course, chewing gum, but in New Zealand slang, we would say chuddy. Hey, can I have a piece of your chuddy? Interesting. This for us is just Gum. Can I have some gum? I like chuddy though. All right, number three. This is a milk bar. A milk bar. I guess you could probably say corner shop if it were on a corner. In New Zealand English, this is a dairy. A dairy. That is so interesting that both of them are related to dairy products. A milk bar to me sounds very similar to a milky bar, which is a brand of white chocolate. This for us is a corner shop a corner shop. They're not always on a corner, only sometimes. On to number four. All right, so what do you call someone who is stupid? In Australian English, we use all the stand ones, but we would call someone a drongo. A drongo. And another good one is a ningbat. A ningbat. But yeah, drongo is a ripper. Use that one, drongo. We would call someone like this an egg. Oh my gosh, what an egg. I love it. And I love the pronunciation of what I would say, egg, egg. We'll talk about that in the next video. Uh, so much to take in here. Ningbat, what a word. Drongo, I love the ng sound in both of these. <laughs> yeah, if someone called me an egg, I would be pretty sure it wasn't a compliment. In British English, there's one word that we love to use and that is twit. <laughs> So many people are going to be watching this and thinking, no, we don't say that. Uh, it's quite an old fashioned word, you twit. <laughs> it's also similar to a swear word. 
Um, so it's quite a nice way to catch someone off guard. I also really like thicko. If someone's thick, it means they're stupid. So if you say, oh, you're such a thicko, that's quite good. In British English, we like to use idioms uh, to describe stupid people, like he's one sandwich short of a picnic, or he's not the sharpest tool in the shed, for example. I, in fact, have a whole video on British polite, not really, ways to call somebody a total idiot. I will link that down below as well. Okay, on to the next. Ah, uh, when you really agree with someone, you say, bloody oath, bloody oath. That's a great Australian slang term that you can use for agreeing with someone, bloody oath. In New Zealand, we would say hard out. Yes, hard out, that's so true. Okay, for me, it would be absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Absa bloody exactly. <laughs> I just can't even fathom how ridiculous I would sound saying hard out, bloody oath. Actually, that sounds quite good, but hard out just doesn't work with my accent, does it? <laughs> On to the next before I embarrass myself even more. <laughs> all right, I'm, I'm sick of always doing this one. These are thongs. We call them thongs. I don't know why we call them thongs, but these are thongs. These are so obviously Jandals, Japanese sandals, jandals. Okay, I put this one in on purpose <laughs> because I know that in Australia they call flip-flops, for me, thongs. And in the UK, a thong refers to a very minimal item of underwear for women. Knickers with just a bit of string at the back, a G-string, for example. So I always find it so hilarious to hear People talking about their thongs so openly. Jandals, I haven't heard that before. Quite clever actually, jandals, Japanese sandals. Makes sense. For us, flip-flops. On to the next. There's about five different ways of saying this in Australian English slang, okay? So I would say bathers from the southeast of Australia. You could also say cozies, togs, swimmers. I'm probably missing some more. Togs, you've got to get your togs out for summer. Interesting that they both say togs. Uh, we, we also use cosy in the UK, short for swimming costume. I think togs might have come from a brand name. I wonder which came first, the brand togs or the word togs for swimming costumes. I wonder, but yes, for us, swimming costume, cosy. It's now popular to call it a one piece as well. A one piece, but we say one piece. Uh, and that means as opposed to a two piece, which is a bikini. Okay, next one. All right, how do you tell someone not to worry? So obviously you can say no worries. Um, that's a typical one that I think we probably all use. Americans don't tend to use that. You could also say in Australian English, no dramas. No dramas, mate. Oh, no dramas. No dramas, don't worry about it. But the funny one is no wackers. Oh, no worries, cuz. I like the cuz. Some people in the UK do use the word cuz, short for cousin. I'm with Pete on no worries. We also sometimes say no problem as well, which is seems to be slightly more US English. One that I really like is no biggie, no biggie. It's not a big deal. No biggie, don't worry. Next. <laughs> Festy, that is something that I used to say when I was a young nipper back at primary school. When I was a, a young kid, I would say something is festy, but adults don't tend to use that. They'll say gross. Rank. You could say something was rank or sick or gross, like, oh, that's rank, or oh, sick, oh, yuck, that's gross. Interesting, interesting, because sick in the UK has now turned into a slang positive term. If something's really cool, you're like, that's sick, that's amazing. <laughs> I remember that slang term coming in because at first I misinterpreted it and thought they meant gross as well. We also use rank in the UK. I've never heard festy before, but it's very expressive. One that I love is horrendous. That's absolutely horrendous. I just think it, it just says exactly what you want it to say. On to the next. We call them the salvos, typically. And it's based on the Salvation Army, a Christian group in Australia that is renowned for having these stores that you can buy secondhand things at, the Salvos. So I'm gonna to go to the Salvos and get some new jeans. Well, secondhand jeans. 
We would say op shop. Ooh, op shop. That sounds great. Uh, we're going to be a bit boring here. I can't really think of any slang terms that we have for charity shops in the UK, in British English. I wonder if any of my fellow Brits can help me out. Do we say anything else? No, nope, the charity shop. It would be cool if we shortened it down something like the, the Chazza Shazza. Uh, but we don't. <laughs> Keeping it formal. <laughs> okay, next one. Yeah, so I guess if you're taking the excessively long route somewhere, I would say to take the scenic route. Taking the scenic route. Yeah, that's... I don't know if that's slang or not, but that's what we would say. We're taking the scenic route. To take a tiki tour. A tiki tour. <gasps> I love that, a tiki tour, amazing. No, we're with Australia on this one. We say to take the scenic route as well. On to the next. Okay, okay, this one is clearly bushwalking. The bush in Australian slang or Australian English is anywhere that is effectively forested, where there's um, vegetation and you're away from civilization. You know, there's no suburbia, there's no city, you're in the bush. If you're walking in the bush, you're bushwalking, right? Makes sense. You could also be hiking. But yes, bush walking is typically what we would use when you go for walks whilst camping or out in the bush. Tramping. You definitely go on a tramp through the bush. Interesting. Very interesting. We definitely don't say bush. A bush refers to a small, low tree. <laughs> if we're talking about something that isn't suburbia, we might say in the wilderness, uh, but we're more likely to say countryside, in the country. If there are lots of trees, we're in a forest or the woods. We do use the word hiking. Um, we also just use the word walking or rambling as well. Rambling. Tramping sounds interesting because tramp is a derogatory term for a homeless person or somebody who lives on the street. Uh, so if I heard that somebody was tramping, I might think maybe they're living on the street. Um, so it's interesting that they use that word but it does make sense because you can tramp along and walk slowly. Yeah, it makes sense. Next one. So if someone is getting very upset, is crying, you could say that they're having a teary. To pack a sad. I'll go on then, pack a sad. To pack a sad, I love it. And to have a teary. In British English, it's to throw a tantrum or to throw a fit as well. Next one. Yeah, so if you're kissing someone, you're pashing them. And we would say, I remember being a teenager when you would, you know, be making out with someone and if you were doing it so much that you ended up with, you know, a bit of a rash, what do we call that? Pash rash. To pash. Oh, did you say they were pashing in the movies? Oh my word, I have never heard that word before, to pash. If someone said fancy a pash, I'd think it's like a pastry or something and probably agree to it, which is worrying. Uh, for us, it's a snog or it is to get with. To get with someone is to kiss or to make out as well, which I think comes from US English. I'm glad that I now have to pass in my vocabulary to prevent future embarrassing situations. Next one. How do you say to organise something? So. If I'm going to organise something like a party, an event, maybe we're going to go out, we're going to go camping, I tee something up. I tee something up. I organise it. For this, we would say to tee something up. To tee something up. Oh, cool that they both say that. We would never say that. Oh, so they both say the same thing. I can't say I've heard that used too much in the UK. We would say to get something organised. I'll get something organised. I'll get something sorted as well. On to the next. In Australian English, we have another heap of, of slang terms for the toilet. Typically, if I was out and about and I wanted to ask someone where their toilet was, I would probably avoid saying the word toilet and instead say loo. But if I was really wanting to be informal, I would say the word dunny. I don't know where that comes from, but we say dunny quite a lot. So these aren't the prettiest words for obvious reasons. We could say either the dunny, or in Tadeo Māori, we would say fari paku, and fari paku also means. Thank you, Rosie. I will get some bleeps on that. <laughs> um, 
interesting. Yes, we can say the house as well. Uh, I've never heard of Dunny before and also Fari Paku. We don't have that language in the UK, uh, so that's really interesting to hear. I think that's the Maori language. We have various slang terms. The loo is good, it's not rude at all. We also have the bog, which is a kind of dirty word. Uh, you wouldn't go to someone's house and say, can I use your bog? Because it would imply that their toilet is dirty. Another one we have is the lav, which is short for the lavatory, which is a very formal and old fashioned word for the toilet. One more is the WC, which is short for water closet. No one says water closet anymore, but WC is quite common. All right, last one. Let's see what they have to say. Cactus. Oh man, I am cactus. I am wrecked. I'm so tired. I'm stuffed. Interesting. So I'm stuffed for me would mean I'm so full of food. I've eaten too much. Cactus means nothing to me. If someone says I'm cactus, I might think they haven't shaved or waxed in a while. So they have spiky arms, arms, legs, anywhere that you might want to wax. Um, yeah, I would be confused. Uh, for us, we say I'm knackered. I'm or I'm shattered as well. I'm knackered or I'm shattered. Knackered is quite impolite. Uh, shattered is a little bit less impolite. Right, that is it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. 17 slang terms from New Zealand, Australia and the UK. When our pronunciation video comes out, I will of course publish it in the description box down below. Make sure you subscribe as well because then it will come up in your feed. Don't forget to download the free PDF that goes along with this lesson. All you've got to do is click on the link in the description box. You sign up to my email list and I'll send it directly to your inbox and then you've signed up for free weekly PDFs going forwards. A huge thank you to Rosie from Not Even French and Pete from Aussie English. Their contribution to this video has been invaluable. All of their details are down below. I really recommend checking out their channels. Don't forget to connect with me on all of my social media. I've got my Facebook, my Instagram, and my website, englishwithlucy.co.uk, where I've got loads of lessons and a fantastic free pronunciation tool. You can click on any phoneme, any sound, or a word with that sound in it, and hear me pronounce it. E, no, air. It's pretty fun. I'm very, very happy with it. If you'd like to improve your listening and vocabulary skills even further, then I have my vlogging channel where I upload fully subtitled videos of my life here on a farm in the English countryside. I will see you soon for another lesson. Mwah.